I feel like looking back on the movie too, for you, especially, um, you know, people associate with you with the character of Sam, but how do you feel about him now at this point in your life, as opposed to maybe when you were playing him for the first time, has your perspective on the character changed um, in the time since then? My depth of understanding him changes all the time. I mean, just in this series of interviews I've been doing, I talked to one person, we were talking about the fact that Sam is a ring bearer. Mm -hmm. Sam, when, when Shelob stabs Frodo, uh, he, and Sam thinks he's dead. Sam takes the ring. And then he goes, he realizes Frodo's not dead. He goes up to the Tower of Kirithungal. He kills Shagrat. And then Frodo wants the ring back. What is today? Are we on, is it Monday? What, what is today? We're, yeah. we're Monday. So yesterday, 20 years and a day after the movie was realized, it's the first time that it occurred to me that he, he didn't put the ring on. Mm -hmm. Sam, unless he did, did he put it on to hide from the, from the orcs? I don't think he did. I see. Okay. So here's what's happening. So <laughs> fable.co is a new uh, platform that has book clubs and I have a book club. We just finished my first one, which is Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. We're going to, the publisher of Lord of the Rings granted us the right to use it like just a week ago. So we switched from the book I was going to do to Lord of the Rings. So uh, I'll let you know, and we're going to do like a chapter a week. We started yesterday it's an amazing thing. I made a determination with the re with the, the members of the book club to try and experience it to the best I can, not from Sam's point of view. Hmm. Everything from the minute I bought the books the first time, from the minute I heard, I didn't even know what Lord of the Rings was when my agent called me in what would have been late spring of 99, right? She's like, it's Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm like, what's that? She goes, the Hobbit, it's the Hobbit. I'm like, the what? So uh, that's bad, <laughs> but uh, but I went to the bookstore and I went in there and but she said I was going to audition for Sam. So from the second I heard of the existence of these things, I heard of the the name Lord of the Rings and the character of Sam. So everything I've experienced of Lord of the Rings has been from Sam's point of view. So um, so I feel like I could do a dissertation or maybe I have on Sam, but in terms of perspective about him, I mean he's so reliable. He's so reliable in his in his ethic, his in his choices, the choices of Master Samwise. Um, but just as a literary character, he's such a reliable literary character. It's reliable that he's a devoted friend. It never is compromised. So the story takes you in all these different places and all these different conflicts and all these. Different, but the one thing that you can can go back to and can have faith in is that at least there's this at least there's Sam by your side all the time. You know, so and it's it's just one one thread of many to focus on. But uh, so I don't think my perspective on that has changed. I think the older when I keep saying to be I'm 50 years old now, I'm a 50 year old man. You know, I come to these books now as a different entity. I've done a, I've done a lot of different. I have three kids now. They're all, you know, the youngest one's about to finish high school. So I wonder as I come into this, how I'll experience Sam differently this time from before. But one thing I, I is immutable is just that his faithfulness, you know, that that fidelity is is um, we need it so much in this world. You need it or else there's just chaos. So, um, you know, so it's an amazing thing that Tolkien created this character that can provide that to us. You know, I'm glad you brought the book club because that was actually going to be my next question, which is, first of all, you already answered this when you first read the books. But also, what do you enjoy about getting to kind of do this this buddy read uh, with the fans officially? OK, so I tell people that the first the fr I read it three times while we were making the films, but it was more like, um, you know, in a I was I, being in a cockpit of a of a plane that was the engines had just gone out. And you're like looking at your checklist and you're like just reading through it, trying to find like, what's the little piece of information that I need to know in order to get the engine to start back up. That's what that it was like data mining. I was like hard charging into the book so I could appreciate the literature. I could appreciate the, the descriptions of the, of the topography and, and all that, but I didn't enjoy the, the books in the way that fans for 20 years have been describing to me how they enjoy the books. So now even that creates its own sense of pressure about my relationship to the books, about any of our relationship to the books who worked on the films. So my commitment is to just try and let that go. 
you know, we're, we're reading it in the plan is to read it in bite sized chunks. I mean, I know people who read the book every year and it takes them two days. <laughs> they go into, you know, they go into the room, they close the door and they come out two days later with tears streaked on their face, feeling like they're recharged for the next year. You know, I, I can't do that. This the reading's too dense. The ideas are too kind of evocative and provocative. And so, so to me, I just want to take each of these chapters. I think we're doing like one a week or something and just tune out, like turn off the alerts on my phone to I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a graduate school at the moment. I just took my final yesterday. I have a managerial economic class. I just took, I passed it barely. Um, I know you're wondering. So, uh, so, but I'm on the plane and I'm like, okay, how can I decompress from that? What, what's the trick of the mind? that allows you to like totally focus on what you're doing so that you can be completely relaxed while you're doing it. And that's, it's like golf. I don't know if you ever played golf, but golf, you have to be, you have to be focused and relaxed at the same time. And so I'm, I'm hoping, and it worked. I mean, what I was, what I came away with from the first like six or seven pages on the plane last night was like just this, this light tone about these, you know, it's concerning hobbits. They're these lovely <laughs> It's this lovely pastoral land and they're fat and they're happy and they're whatever. And in a weird way, you're like, it can't last. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a good book if it lasted, but you, you, so like I'm wanting to meet the book where the book's wanting me to be. The book wants me to know that there's to have anticipation for what's coming next. So I'm, I'm wanting to like calibrate that. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be an amazing new experience. And what I've been saying is, you know, the movies are 20 years old. You've got this DVD set now, the 31 DVDs, this ultimate collection. Uh, it's the super ultimate Mondo. you got to be kidding me. This is ridiculous. I didn't know that there was so much love in the world collection of Lord of the Rings. But for me, like nothing can take away the movies. Nothing can take away the 20 years of fandom that's come at me, all the conventions and autographs and interviews and the award shows and the, and the everything that's gone into it. It's defined my whole life from my thirties to my fifties. It's nothing can ever take that to read the books without pressure. I can afford without the pressure of my career and what's the impact going to be on my career. What are my agents going to think all that stuff that operates in this, in the, in your neurology when I was making my bones, so to speak, and as my acting career, but now my acting career is going to go where it's going to go. I'm going to, it's going to, I'll continue to work. I'm not worried that I'm not, I, when I finished Lord of the Rings, I was like, what if I never work again? <laughs> you know, what if I, Peter Jackson teased me at one point. I'm like, I'm like, Peter, you know, cause we were playing these little hobbits and it's cute and it's funny and it's sweet, but in a way you're like, we're diminutive, you know? And in a way that it's charming, it's also can be kind of pejorative. You know, uh, we have these doubles that we're filming. BK was my double. He's three feet tall. He's a 30 year old man, you know, but you can't help but be like, oh, BK, he's a 30 year old man, you know, and he was patient with all of us. And we, we developed a level of mostly because he would beat me at chess and like have more knowledge in our, you know, geopolitical discussions than I did. And I was always learning from him. But that aside. So but I just remember like having a moment of concern. And Peter's like, you mean you think you're going to walk into an audition? Two years from now, and they're going to be like, "Oh, we thought you were going to be like a little guy." <laughs> like, and uh, and I, you know, and I'm like, "Yeah." I come to think of it, but that's like that's all behind me now, and now I can, you know, I give talks about mental health all over the country. You know, the country was in a mental health crisis, particularly children, um, before the pandemic, mm -hmm. and now we have the pandemic, the sort of soon to hopefully be post pandemic. And the, the damage that's been done to our emotional and psychiatric and psychological life won't be fully understood for a decade. You know, we, we, and it, it, we try to ignore it. We're just moving past it. Everybody's in their own thing, but there's going to be scholars. There's going to be, you know, tests done that through the lens of history, you'll look back at this moment, you'll go, holy crap, that was, that was an amazing thing. That's like, you know, nothing like that had ever happened where the entire planet shut down where people were forced to stay away from each other. And the more you love someone, the more you were interested, the more intensely you wanted to stay away from them in order to protect them. That is a psychological thing. So that, that we, that we don't know how to deal with. So these speeches 
that Samwise gets to give. There's some good left in this world and it's worth it. Even darkness must pass and a new day will come. And when the sun shines, it will shine out the clear. Like there are things that Tolkien put in here that are the result of a lifetime of high quality intellectual focus and spiritual focus forged in the fires of the, the first world war and as a parent of someone in the second world war. And it's here, it's right in this little book. And so if we can, if I can, I'm using, I told them this yesterday in our Zoom kickoff meeting, I'm using the, the members of the, fan, of, the, of the book club as a tether and they're using me as a pace car. And together, I'm hoping, you know, people, you just sit and read the book. Yes, read the book. Oh, it's great. It's so much more than that. There's no way that the tens of thousands of people who I have personally met over 20 years who have tattooed themselves into oblivion with Lord of the Rings language and mythology and imagery, imagery, you know, from the movies, our faces tattooed on their bodies, you know, doctors and lawyers and plumbers and homeless people, people who've wanted to commit suicide and look to the books to stop them, from, look to the movies. Those movies saved me. I was in traction for two years after an accident. I was, you know, these movies, they're bigger than movies. They're bigger than books. So this is my little game. My little game, it's not a game. Well, it's a gambit is to say, I'm going to, I don't know. It's just like, it's, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, uh, and I, and I, you know, I, I, unfortunately I have to, I have to let you go, but I will say just as a fellow fantasy fan, I think there's something then what you're doing that is providing a sense of community with bringing people together to read this book. And I really hope that you on a personal level, are able to just enjoy the story. So, and it sounds like, and it sounds like that's what you're, you're aiming to do. So I, I wish you the best of luck with that. And thank you so much. You for said your- that perfectly. <laughs> you said that perfectly. That's exactly what's afoot. Thank you, Carly. Thank you for, uh, for your, yeah, for your Elon. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and congratulations again on the movie, on the book club, everything and, and best of luck to you moving forward. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too, Carly. Be well. Thank you so much. Thank you.